The circular economy is an integral part to sustaining the shift towards zero carbon and renewable energy. The world set its goals of limiting climate change to 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. And that's going to be no small task for any elements, be it industry, the general public or, or the political community. It's important for the future, it's important for the planet. The world has to essentially shift the energy sources from those fossil fuel-based resources to more renewable energies, such as solar, wind, hydro. A big part of that is going to be electrifying our supply chain of energy. Moving from a combustion technology to a, an electrical technology requires a lot of metals. Copper is very important for electrical transmission. Uh, nickel and cobalt, extremely important in the chemistries of these new technology batteries. These are the type of commodities which clearly will need to be available in large amounts in order for this transition to actually take place. There's certainly going to be a higher demand, and the primary sources, such as mining and concentrates, is not going to be enough to supply that demand. Recycling is going to have to be a part of that. When I tell people we do a lot of recycling, sometimes people are surprised, and I say, you know, it's the Glencoe you don't know. The history of our recycling business goes back to the early 1920s. So that's when the horn mine started. In the Second World War, uh, there was a huge need for copper, and people were invited to uh, recycle all the copper they had in order to uh, help the, the war effort. It was experimental back in those days, and it's grown from sort of a side interest to a core functionality of the group. We started taking end-of-life electronic in the 80s, and then we evolved with that, and today we are processing around 100,000 tons of recycling each and every year. E-waste is the fastest growing waste category in the world. As consumers, we are wanting the latest, next, and best technology, and so we are replacing cell phones and tablets in much shorter time frames. We were one of the first to figure out how to process e-waste, and we have been one of the largest end recyclers of end-of-life electronics, discarded electronics since then. Recycling of electronic devices and recycling in general will require a lot of steps to recover the metals and to maximize the value of the units that you are recycling. The first step will be processing the material to get a sample. After that, the material will need to be shredded in finer particle size, and then we get to the smelting process where the goal will be to melt the metals and make sure that the copper and the precious metal ends up in the recoverable portion of the melt. The process is quite complicated by itself. In terms of just melting, it uh, requires different steps in order to go from the concentrate to the final product. We melt it at a temperature of 1,200 Celsius degrees, and it's done in four furnaces. So it goes from 25 to 70 to 98% copper. When we have finished the process of recovering the copper, we are producing copper anodes weighing uh, about 300 kilograms each. They will be sent to the refinery that Glencore have in Montreal. It's an electric process. Power will go from the anode to the cathode. That's the way we can reach the 99.99% .99 copper. If we didn't recycle these materials, they would just end up in landfill and be lost forever. The moment you label something a waste, people get a different connotation about it. Rather than calling it a waste, one can call it the urban mine. Because what Glencoe is able to do from these post-consumer resources is we can recover copper, gold, silver, platinum, palladium, in fact, we are probably one of the biggest precious metal producer in Canada just because we are recycling those precious metals here at the smelter. We've been working with lithium-ion batteries since their inception. We have the processes required to treat those batteries and recover the metals. We have world-class smelters, we have world-class refineries already in place, and these are billion-dollar assets. So we will be well suited to meet the challenge in recycling these materials. The amount of recycling that we've done over the years has definitely increased. We are sourcing uh, different kinds of uh, streams from machine shops, from the aerospace industry. We're able to keep a lot of materials away from landfills and bring them back into the operation. 
What's most exciting is the growth of the EV market. As we move forward, more gigafactories get built, more vehicles come to the market. We're going to see more production scrap. We want to be part of that story. We want to be able to safely move those batteries, treat those batteries, and return the metals back to producers so that they can continue to grow their businesses. The circular economy is a way of thinking, a way of building things, the way of recycling material in a way that you can reuse the same material over and over again. And it starts essentially from the engineering and design of the products that we use every day themselves. It has to be a circle whereby whatever becomes a waste can be turned into a new product. We did a lot of work to put together what's called the Circular Electronics Partnership. What that allowed us to do, we as a smelter or a refiner could talk to an electrical OEM. Otherwise, these two parties would have no reason to talk to each other because we sit at very opposite ends of a linear supply chain. And suddenly we are sitting next to each other and we are having conversations not designed for circularity. It's essential to start engineering in recyclability to those products to enforce that concept of a circular economy. There's no one company that's going to provide a solution to this problem. The challenge is how do we get the industry's resources working together to provide solutions to what is a big challenge but also a big opportunity. The fossil fuels we supply meet the energy needs of today, but the transition metals we produce through mining and recycling will meet the energy needs of tomorrow. We are one of the top producer, marketer, recycler of the key energy transition metals. We mine it, we refine it, we produce the metals. We want to follow the molecule for the entirety of its life. When that product either hits a midlife issue or an end of life event, we want to grab that molecule, bring it back through our platform, recycle it, put it to reuse, and not just the first life, the second life, the third life, multiple times over. We think by doing that, we really help the world meet the net zero challenge. And that to me is a huge responsibility.